Welcome to this tutorial about the LiveFX to Unreal workflow. In this video we will show you a green screen workflow capturing a camera image, tracking the camera motion and generating a background in Unreal. There are different ways to integrate Unreal background and camera capture using LiveFX. First, you can use Spout to share an image between the two apps directly on the GPU. The upside is low or even no latency. The downside is that there is no sync and obviously both apps Unreal and LiveFX have to run in parallel on a single system. Second, use NDI to share the image. The upside is an easy setup and it allows you to work across the network on multiple machines. Downside is no sync. And third, use SDI to share the image. The upside is timecode sync. The downside is that it requires more hardware and adds a little extra latency. In this video we will cover the SDI workflow because that will produce the most stable outcome and is the best scalable model. We start with setting up a new composition shot. In this case we select the Unreal Live composite template and select the camera capture as primary and Unreal Capture as background layer. For camera we use our already created Komodo profile and for camera tracking select the Intel RealSense. Ready. Now let's tweak the Kia a little bit before we continue. For that we select the Kia layer and go to the qualifier menu. Enable the peak mode and sample the green screen around the checkerboard. You can also multi-sample an area by holding down control and dragging across the image. The next step is to link the incoming camera tracking data to a timecode. By default it links to the timecode of the current shot. Since our base shot is the actual camera capture with timecode, we can either leave it at the default or explicitly select the camera capture channel. Next, we want to send the camera tracking data to Unreal so it can render an image based on the camera position and rotation. For this, make sure the Unreal Live link is activated and either set an explicit IP address of the Unreal system or use the broadcast option and then hit connect to start sending data. So for now we're done in LiveFX. For the next part we move over to Unreal. One of the first things we need to do when setting up the Unreal side is to download the LiveFX Unreal plugin that you add to your Unreal project for receiving tracking and timecode data. The plugin is available from the Assimilate support site. You add the plugin inside your project folder structure into the plugin subfolder. After restarting the Unreal project, the live link will be available and can be started. Note that you do not have to enter a specific IP number, just make sure you use the same port number as you have set with the Unreal Live link in LiveFX. Next, we're going to link the incoming data to the cinema camera that we created in our project. For that we use a standard LiveLink controller and tie that to the active LiveFX Live Link. As you can see the tracking data is now active. Another crucial element in the Unreal setup is to make sure that the output from Unreal has the correct timecode. To ensure this we create a standard Unreal LiveLink timecode provider. That way we can properly sync the Unreal output with the camera input in LiveFX. Link the timecode provider to the LiveFX live link and also make sure that the evaluation method used is set to nearest. Next, make sure the Unreal project uses this new timecode provider as its timecode source. There we go. As you can see we are now using the camera timecode. The final element is to make sure we have a video I.O. output from our Unreal project. In this case we have a Blackmagic SDI output card. For further information on setting this up there is plenty of public documentation available on the web. Now we can return back to LiveFX. 
Here we can see that the two captures are almost in sync. To make the sync perfect, we need to set the tracker delay, which is the time difference between the capture of the image from camera and the capture of the tracking data. Typically, tracking data arrives much faster than image data. In this case, setting the delay to 35 milliseconds seems to be appropriate. Second, make sure the autosync option is enabled, as you can see here. This option ensures that all incoming video I.O. captures are synchronized based on timecode. For the purpose of demonstration, we added a timecode burn-in to the individual capture nodes. As you can see, if we pause the video, the timecodes of Live Camera and Unreal Engine are the same, so we know that our images are perfectly in sync. Also, if we now start to move the camera, you will see that the background moves in sync with the Live Camera. This concludes our tutorial on the LiveFX Unreal workflow using SDI. As mentioned earlier, you can also use Spout or NDI, which may be less complex options, but they might produce a less synchronized image. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.